Against the Grain was my first novel. It's a story about Matt Moyer, a homeschooled kid who grows up working on a farm without modern conveniences, television, or public schools to act as vectors for propaganda. Instead, he's raised by his philosophical uncle who challenges him to use logic and reason to navigate the world. Unfortunately, their idyllic, self-sufficient lifestyles come under attack by the local government, a real estate developer, and the neighboring community, all coveting the valuable Moyer property. In this forthcoming scene, Matt and his girlfriend Emily are working the Moyer roadside produce stand. Emily's parents had explicitly forbid their relationship, as Matt had been deemed as a corrupting influence. In this scene, Emily's brother Tyler extorts money from Matt to keep their relationship secret. They hear the thump of bass in the air. Matt frowns. Emily clenches her fists. A red lifted jeep hops the curb and drives onto the grass, stopping within a few feet of the stand. Gangster rap blares from the speakers. Colton bobs his head to the beat, and Tyler grins from the driver's seat. He cuts the engine and hops out. What up, bitches? Colton says as he walks up to the stand. Tyler saunters toward them, his arms bent, as if his muscles are too big for them to hang normally. He puts his hands on the apples and leans forward. His nose is filled with blackheads, and his cheeks are a mass of pus-filled lesions. I need a 20, Tyler says. Go to hell, Emily says. I told you last time we weren't doing this anymore. I guess I'll just tell mom about your little boyfriend. I really don't care what you do anymore. Just stay away from us. Damn, Buffalo Butt's pissed off, Colton says. Shut up, Colton. Your ghetto act is so lame. Your dad's the chief of police. You're the whitest person I know. It ain't my fault Pop's in the popo. Emily frowns and shakes her head. You're just going to let your girl fight your battles for you, Tyler says. She's doing a pretty good job, Matt says with a smile. Emily crosses her arms. We're not giving you any more money. I think 20 bucks is a small price to pay, Tyler says with a smirk. I could tell mom and dad that I saw you two having sex or doing drugs. You'd never see each other again. We can't keep doing this, Emily says to Matt. You're right, Matt replies. So which one of you is going to give me my $20? No more, Emily says. Go away. Tyler shakes his head. Don't make me beat his little ass again like I did last year. Open the box and give me a 20 or I'll just take the whole thing. Matt and Emily sit silent. Tyler reaches for the box, but Emily grabs it and tosses it to Matt. He sprints toward the driveway. Tyler and Colton give chase. Matt stops at the edge and turns around. Tyler and Colton slow to a strut. I'm going to open it. Give you your money, Matt says, walking toward the pair. Matt stops and looks down at the hole between his feet. He holds out the box. Tyler and Colton move closer. Tyler reaches for the box, but Matt slams the heavy box on the ground and sprints for the woods. He watches from a safe distance as pissed-off yellow jackets pour out of the ground nest, looking for the invader. Tyler and Colton look at each other in confusion, with their hands held out. Tyler bends over to grab the box, and three yellow jackets sting him repeatedly on his hand and arm. Colton is stung repeatedly on the exposed area of his calves below his baggy jean shorts. After the initial stings, the Yellow Jackets have formally marked their targets, and hundreds of wasps attack. Tyler drops the box, and he and Colton sprint toward the jeep, flailing their arms, smacking themselves, trying to stop the onslaught of venom. They jump in the open jeep, but the wasps still attack. Tyler fumbles with his keys. Go! Hurry up! Colton says, still smacking himself. Tyler starts the jeep and guns the vehicle into the street. An SUV swerves to avoid them, the driver leaning on the horn in the process. Matt stands in the woods, watching the chaos. Emily walks over. She kisses him on the lips. Matt furrows his brow and steps back. What's wrong? She asks. Do you know if Tyler and Colton are allergic to bees? Emily shrugs. I don't know. I hope not, because if one of them is, I might have killed someone. Matt shakes his head, his eyes glassy. I shouldn't have done that. I should have just given him the money. Emily puts her hand on his back. You didn't do anything wrong. You were defending yourself. Do you have your cell? Yeah. Can you call him? We have to make sure they don't have any allergic symptoms. Emily frowns. It's in my bag. They jog back to the stand. She grabs her cell from her bag. Do you want to talk? It would probably go over better coming from you. I'll tell you what to say. Emily nods and dials her brother. She waits as the phone rings. What the hell do you want? 
Tyler says loud enough that Matt can hear. Ask him if he or Colton have any hives or swelling in areas where they were not stung. Emily asks. What do you care? Tell that little bitch I'm gonna kick his- Because you could die, dumbass. After a pause, Emily looks at Matt. He says no. Ask him if either of them have swelling of the face or throat or tongue. He says no. What about trouble breathing or dizziness? He says no. How about stomach cramps, nausea, or diarrhea? Emily asks, listens, then replies. I don't care what you say to mom. You act like you're so tough, and then you get a few bee stings and you go crying to mommy. You got what you deserve, Tyler. She closes her phone with a grin. He said if he shits himself, he's going to kill you.